Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Now, as you know, our phones are packed full of various different sensors. Of course, that's how you play games that allow you to tilt your phone to control the characters. But there are several others that will make things easier for you. The one we're particularly interested in today is the compass. If you've ever used your phone for navigation purposes, say in Google Maps, you'll know that, well, that little icon of you on screen actually shows the direction in which you're facing. As you actually rotate your phone, you will see that icon change. That of course means that there is some kind of compass inside your phone that is able to tell which direction is actually facing. Now, this sensor is particularly interesting because it's one of the least precise sensors you actually have in your phone. Here's why. If you throw your mind back to, well, when you did physics or science in school, you will remember that a very simple compass is made up of, well, a magnet tied to some string, just let it spin and it'll eventually find its way, right? A compass is actually a magnetic sensor. So why is something so primitive and simple still so imprecise? The clue to finding this out lies in the phone itself. In fact, it's related to what neighbors the sensor actually has. Unfortunately, if you have a magnetic sensor that is located beside a bunch of components that also work with, you know, electromagnetism, yeah, you're gonna get a fair bit of interference on the sensor itself. Hopefully, you can imagine the kind of dilemma that phone developers have to go through. Clearly, having a sensor is good. Unfortunately, you also cannot remove, you know, the sources of interference because they are critical to the basic functions of a phone. So, what then? We've got to put these two things together, even though they affect each other. As it turns out, the ingenious way to work around this is simply calibration. You may or may not have seen this before, but uh, if you have an Android phone, go ahead and pop open Google Maps and just tap on your little blue dot, you know, the dot representing where you are. On the lower left of the screen, you will see a button that says Calibrate Compass. If you tap that, the instructions given to you are to actually move your phone in a figure of eight pattern. But not just that, right? You're not just holding your phone like that and going like that. You have to tilt your phone as you're going along. All right? So uh, it's a little bit difficult for me to do the pattern. I've always found it a little bit strange. But if you look carefully at how the phone is rotating, you will find that your phone is rotating all possible angles. It's going a full sphere. Here's why this is ingenious. If your phone is rotating and rotating in as many axes as possible, we are actually able to tell apart the Earth's magnetic field from the phone's interference itself. The reason is extremely simple. Any source of interference on the phone will turn with the phone. That is, if you think there's a magnetic field here, and when you rotate and it's still here, well, that tells you that it's stuck to you, right? And if you rotate and you feel it moving, then it must come from the outside. By doing this figure of eight pattern a couple of times, your phone has a good enough idea of how much interference is actually the local interference on the phone itself and how much of it is actually coming from the outside world, which means, well, we need to pay attention to that because that's probably useful information. You'll notice that after doing the compass calibration, your sprite looks a little bit different, right? The sort of spread of possible angles is now reduced. Since you've given your phone a chance to learn what is noise and what is not, it now has a better idea of what direction you're facing. So there you go, that's some interesting insights about your phone's compass. If at any point of time you feel that that's not really working properly, well, go into Google Maps, do that little figure of eight pattern, and it helps. Clearly, that's not perfect. We haven't removed the sources of interference, but we've done our best to negate its interfering ability, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's how it works. That's the ingenious solution uh, to, well, isolating the noise. That's all the rest for this episode of Friday Minis. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with Nerfus.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.